Hello, welcome to a new episode of Talk Turkey. Hi, Nevshin. Uh, we had a rather long break, but we are back with a new episode of Talk Turkey. Uh, maybe just as a news to our viewers, uh, now Talk Turkey is also available as a podcast, so they will be able to also uh, listen to Talk Turkey through different platforms. Exactly. And we're back again talking about, guess what, elections. Once again. <laughs> but for maybe for a of- while to be the last one because under normal circumstances uh, we will not have any other elections until 2028 so maybe this is the last political trailer for a while <laughs> who knows i mean uh, i mean we'll see we'll talk about those so do you want to make a brief yeah, I can, I can provide a very brief background because i'm um, just like in turkey i think uh, many people in, in europe as well they've lost their appetite about turkey so they're not really following as they were following the elections uh, last year. Uh, this is, of course, also the municipal elections, but still, I think that the excitement level is uh, much lower. So I think it still makes sense to provide some basics uh, because we don't really see them in, uh, in European media nowadays. So Turkey will hold municipal elections on 31st of March. Uh, it's really soon. Uh, the last elections were in 2019, and it was resulted in a big victory, actually, for the opposition. Turkish opposition won most of the big cities, including three biggest cities, Istanbul, Ankara, and Izmir. So, actually, it was also one of the factors that motivated the opposition uh, in last year's presidential elections. But the same success, unfortunately, could not be repeated for uh, for the opposition parties. So. Very basic information, uh, municipal elections, they take every five years in Turkey. Uh, there's only one round, therefore candidates don't need more than 50% of the vote as in the presidential elections. So the candidate with the most votes wins. Uh, if there are many candidates, a candidate can even be elected actually uh, with a relatively low percentage. Uh, an example is actually in 1994 elections, Erdogan won the municipal elections in Istanbul in 94 with only 25%. This was possible because the center-right, center-left parties, they were split and they had four strong candidates among those parties. I provide this information because unlike 2019, uh, where there was close cooperation between the opposition parties, there are again many candidates. Um, there is no real electoral coalition on the opposition side. Uh, I'm not going into details, probably we can discuss uh, pros and cons of uh, this and the balances between different political parties later. Um, Another important point is that unlike the parliamentary elections in Turkey, the personality of the candidates uh, probably also matters in a different way in municipal elections because people may not always stick to their party preferences and they can even vote for a candidate if they think he or she can really do a good job as a mayor. That's why the uh, campaign period is really important. I mean, many people maybe don't know their parliamentarians from their cities, but they really know their mayor. So uh, there's a different level of uh, commitment at the local level. So you have to really convince the voters. For example, when Imamol was a candidate in 2019, the majority of people in Istanbul, they didn't even know him. But uh, I mean, he was just a mayor of a district in Istanbul. But after a successful campaign, he managed to convince millions and he won. So, in fact, he won even twice because the election in Istanbul uh, were repeated in 2019. So beyond the domestic political dynamics, you can really win these elections with a successful campaign period. Campaigns are really important. On the other hand, I should also note that some people tend to vote for the governing party in municipal elections by thinking that they can potentially get a better service if the mayor is supported by the central government. This can also play a role, especially considering the current policies of the government. I mean, being an opposition mayor in Turkey is not an easy task. You cannot do everything you can plan because the central authority may block or slow down the process. There are court proceedings, just like in the case of Imamolo. Um, So these obstacles are used regularly against uh, the opposition mayors. And actually, the government even said something like this very openly, that citizens would get better service if they elect a mayor from the 
from the ruling party, they don't even shy away from accepting this fact. So everything actually we talked uh, about in 2023 applies to the municipal elections as well. We can still talk about maybe largely free elections, but not really fair elections. We see this uh, again very clearly in the campaign period, how uh, so resources are used, how media is uh, capitalized as well. So the, the campaign is uh, obviously the, uh, of the government mayors are supported by huge resources. Maybe the last point uh, regarding the differences, uh, that's also usually an interesting point for the European viewers. Uh, so the difference between the local elections and last year's presidential elections, also the waters are broke. Um, Turks living abroad can vote in the parliamentary and presidential elections, but obviously they cannot vote in the municipal elections because their main residence is not in Turkey. In 2023 presidential elections, 60% of the voters abroad supported Erdogan, while about 40% voted for the opposition candidate. So the absence of these voters in the municipal elections is also a small advantage uh, for the opposition because uh, even one or two percent can really make a difference in this election. It does indeed, you know. I mean, one one disadvantage of the opposition in this election is that, I mean, you mentioned campaigns are important. It is indeed, you know. Turkish people pay attention to even like which banners, which party used, which, which pictures they use, which music they have even. I was talking to one of the campaign managers of Ekrem Imamol and I was like, do you guys really need these election songs? Because that's that's major in Turkey. And they said, you know what it is? Like uh, when you have this written and, you know, people that memorize it, they get to familiarize more and more with the candidates. So politics in Turkey is interesting and fun at the same time. Yes, campaigns are important, but one disadvantage of the opposition is that people are wary of the election. Because especially for the um, opposition electorate, May presidential elections had been a huge, um, basically, how shall I put it? They, they are a disappointment, a big, big, big disappointment because they were really hopeful this time. And what the Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, the opposition candidate, they were like, and his team were feeding people. It's won, we won this election, it's over. When we take the office, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. They were talking about that. So people were really hopeful this time. People believed in, 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 a, in a big win, basically, and that, that did not materialize. And this had been a big disappointment. And people people find it now meaningless, like going and voting for the opposition, doing something. People find it meaningless. And right after the presidential election, uh, the hopes of, of the elected were shattered. And right after that, you know, we talked about that a lot. You know, the opposition was a block. It was a system of alliances. Six parties gathered. They formed an opposition alliance. They were working on a common um, constitution, whatnot, you know, common goals with this and that. But then right after the election, they started attacking each other. They started blackmailing each other right in front of the public. They started throwing all these dirty laundry about of, of each other out in the open. So it was also another big disappointment. People were shocked. People thought, you know, guys, we thought you six, six of you, you got together. You were really working closely together for a better Turkey, but actually you were just working behind each other. What is that? So this had been a big disappointment. So this time I'm talking to people like on the street, we're trying to do a lot of Vox Populi and stuff. People are like, we don't care anymore. You know, they're still in this, but you know, you know, Turkish people, we are hot blooded. So things might change, especially in the last month or last two weeks of the election is really important. That is one thing. And that's an, the, the another thing. It's where the, the things are really difficult for the opposition is that basically there are no alliances. So in Istanbul, you also mentioned also in Ankara, there were only two candidates mainly, you know, of the opposition and uh, of AK party. But now there are many candidates and the opposition candidates again attacking each other. Basically, you know, so again, we're seeing this scenario. So it's harder for the opposition, but opposition also has an advantage. But, I mean, we mentioned that in the presidential elections also, so the economy is really bad. It's really hitting hard. So um, the candidates uh, of, of a party, they cannot differentiate themselves uh, with their parties and they're trying, they are getting a lot of criticism because of the economy. One, one, one interesting thing, 
remember in the presidential elections, we've seen the, the candidate of CHP, Kemal Bey, he was trying to distance himself a little bit from the party. He was like, I am the candidate of the all opposition. You know, they were using, in most of the rallies, they were only using Turkish flags, but not par party flags, if you remember. So we're seeing a similar pattern now, this time with AK Party candidates. For example, I was in Ankara and uh, Ankara's AK Party candidate, he has all these banners. What's interesting, he's not using party logo in Ankara. He's trying to, you know, distance himself, not to take all the criticism about bad economy and this and that. Also the candidate of AK Party in Izmir, he's not using the logo. He's like, well, you know, this is municipality elections. This is different. This is all about providing people service. It's nothing to do with politics. So they are trying to trying to use that. So, you know, things are not easy for um, either side, I'd say. Yeah, and also, I mean, for the governing alliance, of course, the main parties are still there, AKP and Nationalist MHP. Uh, but they are not as united as the uh, presidential and parliamentary elections either because they were also cooperating with some small parties and some of them are not there um, and they also have their own candidates. So, uh, and they're also attacking uh, the gov government candidates very harshly actually. So uh, there as well, everything is not um, so perfect, let's say. And also, I think these results will have consequences, uh, especially, of course, for the for the opposition, um, for the parties, for the leadership of those parties. Uh, we will see also the real power of some opposition parties that will run on the. Uh, they were running on the main list of the opposition, main opposition party last time, uh, but this time they are doing it alone. So we will see if they are as uh, strong as they they claimed, and also how strong they are and how successful they are going to be. So there will be consequences for parties and there will be consequences uh, probably for some leaders as well, such as uh, Mary Lechner of E-Party. She may really feel a lot of pressure if the results are bad for, uh, for the party. This is also important test for the leader of the main opposition party, Özgür Özel. He's a relatively new leader, so he needs at least some limited success to strengthen his position and consolidate support within the party. Um, it's not only important for the party leaders, I think the elections are very important for Istanbul Mayor Ekrem Yomamol as well and for his future career. If he wins the elections in Istanbul, it will be uh, another big victory against Erdogan, the third victory actually, because actually he is running against AKP's candidate Kurum, but when it comes to Istanbul, it's really about actually running against the president because he gives a lot of importance. So if Imamoğlu is re-elected, he will also be one of the strongest presidential candidates in the next elections. Of course, uh, four years is a very long time and a lot can change in the meantime, but he will certainly continue to strengthen his image. And we shouldn't forget that Istanbul matters a lot. I mean, uh, maybe people are less motivated uh, but we will need to watch, especially the Istanbul elections, very closely. And I believe that many voters will be much more motivated and enthusiastic in Istanbul because it's going to be a very uh, tight uh, race as well. And there's no need to explain, actually, why Istanbul is important. But uh, it is, of course, the economic and cultural capital of Turkey in terms of size, population and economy. Istanbul is bigger than even many EU member states. I mean, in terms of population, the city is larger than 20 of 27 EU member states. That's why only the election in Istanbul alone is already extremely important, much more important than many national elections maybe uh, in Europe in this year. And as has been repeated by Erdogan and many other political figures, whoever wins in Istanbul wins Turkey sort of attitude. Of course, this didn't happen in 2023. Uh, the opposition won Istanbul in 2019, but not in 2023. But we shouldn't forget that, of course, probably this also happened because of the uh, the wrong choice of the candidates. Um, we know very well that according to many polls, actually Istanbul mayor and Ankara mayor, uh, they seem to have a much better chance in the elections, but uh, it didn't work. So that's why I still believe that whoever wins Istanbul can still win Turkey. That's why it is very important. That's also why the president is giving so much importance to, to Istanbul. 
but of course, uh, it's there is also disadvantage for the opposition. Of course, it's divided. There are also other candidates. Maybe they will get a few percent, but a few percent can really matter in these elections. Uh, but the my, one maybe positive point is that the dynamics in Istanbul have also changed a lot in the recent years. I mean, the opposition in Istanbul is really stronger than it used to be. In the second round of the presidential elections, the opposition candidate won around 52% of the vote in Istanbul. So the opposition voters are actually stronger, uh, even if they are not united. Uh, moreover, Imamoğlu is still, I think, a popular mayor. He's a popular political figure. He's well in campaigning, and I think he's still doing much better in terms of campaign compared to the AKP's candidate, who doesn't seem to have much experience in, uh, in this. So that's why he can still, Imamoğlu can still win despite a wide opposition. Um, and this is certainly be the most important element in the elections to watch. And it's likely to be a very close race as well. And it may be also another night, long night before we know the winner. So uh, probably a new political thriller is loading. So we need to watch uh, the results of Istanbul election uh, even separately uh, that night. I agree. This is the election. This is the election of Istanbul. Everybody's watching Istanbul closely. It's going to be go home or go for all for Ekrem Imamoğlu. I mean, if he, if he wins this, obviously the perception is going to change because he's going to be the only opposition leader who won an elections against Mr. Erdogan. He ordered it did twice. This is going to be the third time which never happened before eh, on that scale. So that's important. You know, Istanbul is interesting. He's running running against Murat Kurum, the AK Party candidate. So, I mean, the problem with AK Party is, the governing party, Erdogan's party is, I mean, the only star in that party is Mr. Erdogan. There cannot be any other stars. It's, it's a one party, uh, it's a one person party, basically. So actually, they had a hard time picking a candidate because Ekrem Imamoğlu has this star quality, you know. He has a star light, so to say. But in Akbar, that that's not possible. You know, Erdogan established a party with his comrades. They were also politically influential figures, but then they part ways, you know, in time. So he's now the only figure there, only younger people, careerist younger people within the party or like weaker, politically weaker figures. So Murat Kurum, you cannot say he's like a star or anything. He's he has a technocratic background. He was a minister of um, city planning once, but he does not have a particularly uh, positive CV on that matter. So he's not a bright candidate, but of course he has the backing of Erdogan. So what usually happens is that usually we see the opposition heading in the polls, especially in cities like Istanbul and Ankara, whether the for local elections or general elections. But then in the last two weeks, usually Erdogan takes off. He comes and takes over the campaign and he goes to every uh, neighborhood in Istanbul and he talks on behalf of his candidate and then he takes over. That's what usually happens. So it's, you know, it's a little early to speak. But um, I received this poll. This is Optimar the polling company, but let me say, so in Turkey, polling companies are polarized also. There are like pro-government and pro-opposition polling companies. This one is a very pro-AK party polling company, right? So this is the latest poll they have. So it shows uh, Murat Kurum and Ekrem Imamoğlu almost the same. Uh, Murat Kurum only 0.4 points ahead. I mean, statistically, it's not really serious because statistically, actually, one point, two points is margin of error. You cannot really, you cannot really say, oh, this candidate is heading 0.5. You know, you cannot measure that, right? You know, I mean, you you are a political scientist, Murat. You deal a lot with statistics, so it's it's not. You know, this is a margin a margin of error. You cannot know. But I think what the the, the government is trying to do is like they are trying to give implement the sense that, oh, you know what? It's not for sure for Ekrem Mamol to win. We can win this also. You know, they're trying to basically spread this sentiment. I think this is what all these polls are about. But on the other hand, since we cannot really trust any poll, it's not, I think, the opposition, because in most of the polls, it looks like Ekrem Mamol is way ahead of Murat Kurum. 
But I think neither side should be basically, I mean, Ekrem Oğlu should not be too comfortable saying that, okay, I'm heading in the polls or Murat Kurum, I don't know, they should not trust their polls either, I'd say. So it's, I mean, it depends because, because of the polarization, it's hard to see. But remembering in the last elections, you also said, even in the constitution referendum, opposition was ahead in Istanbul. Presidential elections. The last few few elections, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty one percent was for the opposition, so Ekrem Amol might have the advantage. But you mentioned that also, President Erdogan, when he's campaigning, he comes up and he says, "You saw what happens. If the local governor, gov- governors, if the if the if the local government, saying the mayors, are not from our party, it's hardship. There is no harmony. There is chaos. What he means." We don't let them work, basically. If they're not from our party, you guys are going to have a really difficult time of receiving service because this is what we're going to do. He says that subtly and openly. So if this is going to work this time, we shall see. But then what what after this local elections? Because practically there are no other elections until 2028. However, Erdogan is signaling He is yearning for a totally new constitution that is going to basically strengthen his Erdoganist structure in Turkey, so to say. And also, according to the existing constitution, he cannot run in 2028. But he's only 70 years old for American politics. That's very young, for example. So I think he wants to run again. He wants to secure another term for him for himself. He wants to run. Um, because of his ego, and I don't think they can find any other person who can who can ful- fulfill his chair among the you know, cadres of the government. That, that's one reason. So there's that, and he wants the Erdogan structure for Turkey to be basically the basic pillar of Turkish Republic. So he's going to push for a new constitution. So yes, after the local elections, elections will be over, but I think we'll be seeing a lot of discussions and fights within the parliament. And also highly likely we will see a referendum for the new constitution. So the discussion will not be over. And probably polarization either, because normally you would expect that as there are no elections, then they would focus on, I don't know, uh, economy and other matters. But if there is of course a goal to change the constitution, then He will again need polarization. He will need to consolidate the voters. But probably the results of these elections will be also detrimental in that sense. I mean, if he sees that AKP is really still very strong together with the, with the MHP, then maybe he will feel much more comfortable to go ahead with this idea. So that's also why, especially big cities, but the, the general results uh, will be will be really important. And also we'll see, uh, because until the elections, uh, of course, uh, especially in economy, he had to uh, be much more careful. So uh, in terms of like a uh, raise of uh, salaries and everything. So now that the election periods will be over, especially if he doesn't go ahead with the idea of the, the constitutional change immediately, we may also see maybe stricter uh, economic policies as well. He is not going to be uh that uh open we're, we're gonna have to see a lot of austerity as far as i understand yeah because that's also in a way needed actually i mean uh even if the opposition was ruling the country they had to do that too uh and at some point probably he also sees that in order to make a meaningful change in the in the economic situation he also needs to change certain things and authority will be uh necessary as well so Uh, that's that can be one of the points. Uh, we will of course see if the current economic policy uh, will continue with the current economic theme as well. Uh, so that's also another uh, discussion in Turkey whether the, the same minister Shimshek can continue with his own economic uh, line and the policy and vision. Uh, probably the election results will also have consequences uh, for this too. But in any case, I mean, at least in Istanbul, we are going to see, of course, very tight elections. Um, and as you said, I mean, the polling companies, probably their credibility is really very, very low nowadays. Um, I don't see anyone in Turkey who would trust them. 
be it the pro position or pro uh, pro government ones, we can't really trust them even when they say that okay, Imam is winning with ten percent difference. No one really takes them seriously, and actually, I hope. Um, Imam Ali himself doesn't take it seriously because uh, we saw what happened last year. So uh, I think until the last day, last moment, uh, the opposition should uh, be very cautious about such things and they need to work very hard. Uh, but that's certainly be a very exciting uh, night, especially to watch uh, Istanbul. I mean, we can say that in Ankara, the opposition's uh, probably chances much higher. Uh, they seem to be doing quite well there. Well, Izmir is already the, an opposition city, so there probably again we will see, even if the two opposition candidates will be uh, getting votes from each other, but still, uh, it should, under normal circumstances, the opposition should win. So Istanbul will be the real tight one, so we are going to watch that one probably very closely, and we'll talk about probably Istanbul election and its results as well in the coming period. Exactly. For Talk Turkey viewers, we'll be following the election step by step and reporting the developments. Until the next episode, then. Exactly. Bye. Bye. Bye.